Hello, and welcome to the walkthrough video for our first collaboration with the world flutist, vocalist, session musician, William Arnold. And this is the Shan Bawu. The concept behind this instrument, and those to follow it, is to take Bill's wonderful musicality and create virtual instruments that are soaked in that. Bill has a really unique sound, and his approach is very much through the lens of the modern film and video game world. So before I talk briefly about the Bawu, I encourage everyone to stop for a moment and check out his website. You can hear his work, watch him play dozens of cool and somewhat rare instruments, and learn more about his background and approach. Okay, so on to the Bawu. The Bawu. Um, Shen Bawu means mountain bawu. Shen is Chinese for mountain. And we wanted to evoke image, the imagery and the landscape for where this instrument comes from, which is a specific uh, region of China that is very mountainous and, and really epically beautiful. So um, it's a Chinese instrument, and it looks a bit like a flute, but it's actually a free reed, and it sounds a lot like a clarinet. Um, it's a sound that I was unfamiliar with until we recorded these samples, and I think there's something really special about the timbre. So let's play a little bit. Okay, so the first thing that I want to talk about are the microphrases. I'm not sure if you noticed, but there were these really elaborate and ornamental phrases that were being triggered. And um, this is the first time that we've done something like this, and it was the perfect opportunity because we really wanted to highlight Bill's musicality and his approach to each instrument. Uh, so not only are we recording legato slides, legato slurs, legato ornaments, um, which is a true legato transition, by the way. Um, we recorded four variations of microphrases, which are these kind of mordant or ornamental, like highly elaborate one to two second phrases that are, that are legato. So they connect from the first note to the second note, but what happens in between is extremely elaborate. So for example... So with a little bit of trial and error and, and getting to know the instrument, you can deliberately trigger the microphrases that you want, and you could select between the four microphrases by key switch down here. And those key switches are assignable. So 
I love these microphrases and they make the instrument, they just bring it to a next level. It's really exciting to, um, to hear Bill's musicality and his, his playing really come through in these samples. And it's fun for us to have something that's a little bit more performative. So now I, I did a little bit of playing and I talked about microphrases. Let me go through every control so that you get a sense for what is available in the instrument. So we went through the microphrases. There's A, B, C, and D, and four key switches down here that you can see. And then in the articulation area, you get to choose between long, short, and auto. And this is really simple. All of the long articulations, uh, it's basically sustains and legato, so everything that you've already heard. The short articulations, um, there are two varieties, just the quiet samples and the louder ones. And um, let's play those. Then there's auto. So the auto articulation is, is really fun. This allows you to play both the long and shorts without the bother of playing with key switches. So when you play a long note, you hear a long note. And when you play a short note, you hear a legit short. Keep in mind that when you go into auto mode, there is just a slight extra bit of lag because the program is thinking in the background and waiting to see if you're going to hold a note or if you're going to lift the note. And so there's just about maybe a 60 to 80 millisecond delay for that. All right, up here there's a poly button. So when poly is on, the instrument is kind of like a pad where you could play chords. This round robin button will control um, the natural round robins that the instrument has. So, for example, um, for slurs and ornaments, there's four round robin, and for the microphrase, uh, there's only a single round robin. But for all of the standard articulations, or most of them, there are four round robins. When you turn that off, you just hear one. Here we go. So as you go back and forth between the notes, you only hear one of the round robins. When you do this, it's a subtle difference, but that variation makes a, all the world of difference to me. There's some simple reverb control here. So at zero, the instrument is completely dry.
right? And then there's the uh, sliders for dynamics, vibrato depth, and vibrato speed. These are controlled by CC, and they can be controlled by the mouse too, and they just reflect the state of dynamics. Uh, so dynamic CC by default is set to CC11. Vibrato depth is basically the same thing as vibrato intensity. That's exactly what that means. So let's listen to the vibrato. and then vibrato speed. I should mention that Jonathan spent a really long time modeling the vibrato for this instrument and did a fantastic job. It's um it's a really elaborate kind of vibrato that incorporates a few different effects under the hood. Going to the configure page, this is where all of you MIDI tweakers and super nerds can get more detailed, and that's I'm, I'm definitely in that category, so I say that lovingly. Um, let's start with the MIDI CC and key switch assignments. By default, the dynamics are set to CC11, vibrato depth or intensity to CC1, Vibrato speed, CC14, legato speed, CC20, and portamento speed, CC22. And then there are these little MIDI learn buttons. So you could change the CC just by clicking that and moving a MIDI dial uh, or controller. And then you can uh, do the same thing with key switches. By default, longs are set to G2 and shorts are set to A2, but you can customize that and also use the MIDI learn button. And then the microphrases are set by default to C2 and then the three notes above it. And you can set all of, the, all of these possibilities here with the three notes above it. They're, they're all tied together. And then you have velocity thresholds. So this is worth talking about a little bit. Um, this instrument triggers different legato styles by velocity. So here is where you can customize what that does. By default, if you play under a velocity of 20, you'll trigger a portamento. And then if you play between 20 and 96, you'll trigger a slur or a normal legato. And if you play between 96 and 118, you will trigger a true legato ornament. And then when you play above 118, velocity of 118, you'll trigger a microphrase.
those are super fun to play. So finally, this section here on the left, legato speed by default is adaptive. So the faster you play, the more compressed the legato transitions get. And it, what that gives you is a feeling of responsiveness. If you don't like that adaptive legato speed, you, turn, you can turn that off here and then just set it manually and it will stay there. Feels so much different when it's on. Even though it's pretty subtle, when it's adapting to your speed, it's something that you really get used to and start to depend on. So uh, portamento speed, you can control the speed of the slides between notes using this style, 100 being the fastest and zero being the slowest. And here you have a low RAM mode. And when you go into low RAM mode, what happens is it switches the samples from um, Time Machine under the hood. And Time Machine is that thing that compresses the sample speed when you're playing faster and expands it when you're playing slower. And it shuts all that off. So the legato speed is not adaptive in the same way, and the portamento speed cannot be changed when you're in low RAM mode. And the benefit of that, uh, there is a benefit, and that is that the audio fidelity is slightly better because when you're compressing and expanding those samples in real time, you're subject to those real time stretching algorithms. So when low RAM mode is activated, it uses a little bit less RAM, and it also sounds a little bit more crisp. It's something that you wouldn't notice unless you are intimately familiar with the instrument, which of course I am. Finally, round robin mode can be switched between random and cycle. So when in random mode, it'll choose randomly between the four round robin options so that you don't have a consistent pattern. Um, although if you want a little bit more predictability in your round robins, then you could choose cycle and it will just cycle one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and so on. So that's the William Arnold Shanbawu. We're so excited to share this first instrument with you and we look forward to sharing the future ones uh, that are coming up soon. Thanks for watching. 